want you to fulfill what God's called you to do. I want you to begin to see yourself the way he sees you. But you've got to begin to die to the old. And you've got to learn what God has to say about you. You've got to renew your mind. Everybody say, renew my mind. It's called the new birth. Amen? All things are new. Amen? Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 12. This is what God has to say about you. How many of you guys are looking to get encouraged today? You're going to find what God's called you to do. You're going to get traction in it. <clears throat> You're going to be blessed. Everything you put your hand to will begin to multiply. Amen. Come on, somebody. You will start becoming the head and not the tail. You will only know to be above and never beneath. Come on, somebody. This is what God has for every single person in the sound of my voice in this place. Look at this. But as to many as he did receive and welcome him. Do I have any in this place? Let me say it again. Do I have any in this place? But as to many as he did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority. In the Amplified it says, power, privilege, and right to become the children of God. That's who you are. You are a child of the most high God. Can I get a big amen in this place? Everybody say, I am a child of the most high God. That is, to those who believe and adhere to, trust in, rely on his name. Look at this, verse 13 it says, who owe, who owe their birth neither to a blood, nor to blood, nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God. Are you listening to verse 13, people? In the Amplified in quotations, it says this, they are born of God. You are born of God. They ask Jesus, what do you mean? Born again. Go back in the womb and be born again. It is like that, but spiritually. You are born again again. Amen? The problem is a lot of people are not born again. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? I believe in Jesus. So do the demons. Amen? <clears throat> to be born again, you have to believe that you're born again. I'm going to say it again. To be born again, you have actually have got to believe that your old life with its old impulses in nature has been crucified with Christ and you are born into a new creation that you have to renew your mind to become. Can I get a big amen in this church? That's what it takes to be born again. And if you don't do that, you won't be born again. You're not born again because you confess with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart. And believing in your heart means that you have to have faith. And faith means that you have to act on that belief. Are you listening to me? So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, do all the, the, the things, but you don't begin to act on that which you say you believe, it is not faith. Therefore, you do not believe it according to Scripture. Come on, church. A lot of people are professing to be born again, but they don't believe they're born again. So therefore, you are not born again. Because you think that your sin holds you back. You're not born again. Because you've allowed the enemy to accuse you of your past. Your past has been forgiven and you've got to receive that forgiveness. Can I get a big amen in this church? And if you don't receive that forgiveness and you hold on to it, my friend, you're not born again. Because you are guilty. Because you believe that you are guilty. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. My friend, your past has got no hold on you because of the blood of Jesus. 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross, Jesus says, it is finished. Nevertheless, I live, but Christ that lives through me. The life that I live, come on. How do you live it? By the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Look at this. Everybody say verse 13. Who owe, listen, this is talking about you. Everybody say it's talking about you. Turn to your neighbor says, talking about you. Who owe their birth neither to the blood nor the will of the flesh. So you have got to stop looking at yourself as the son of this person and that person. I know my natural parents. Amen. 
but I'm a child of the Most High God. See, that's different. You understand what I'm talking about? That's different. That has nothing to do with lineage. That has nothing to do with reputation. Amen? That has nothing to do with last names. That has nothing to do with skin color. I am born of God. I can do what he says I can do. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you believe that your past has got a hold on you, it's because you don't believe in the blood of Jesus, my friend. You cannot believe in the blood of Jesus and believe that your past still has a hold on you. You just don't believe, my friend. And I'm challenging that by the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, in this place today. Come on, somebody. Because somebody's going to get born again, again, today. Amen? Come on, somebody. I'm tired of you living your broken life. It's time to get on the victory side. Come on, somebody. It's time to believe that you're all redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I am forgiven. He shed his blood for me. I am as white as snow. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? Why? Because Jesus died at Calvary. Who owe their birth neither to the blood nor the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor the will of man, that of, nat that of a natural father. You are no longer, your lineage no longer is traced back to your natural father. Now it is traced back to your heavenly father. Mm, my God, come on, if you actually believe this stuff. Think about it. If, if your lineage goes back to your heavenly father and you're seated with Christ in heavenly places and God has richly blessed you with all things pertaining to godliness and life. Come on, somebody. What have you got to fear? Amen. Woo, I feel boldness arising in this place. I've never seen the righteous forsaken of the seed begging for bread. Every man born of God has the victory and overcomes the world. Every single one. Mm -mm -mm. Every single one, yes, every single man and woman born of God has the victory and overcomes the world. Every single one, yes, every single one. That is you if you believe it. Woo, my Lord, I feel it today. Well, Pastor Alice, that's all I hear. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I didn't get the interpretation. Because it's not in the book. I don't believe it. I can't hear it. I don't receive it. Are you listening to me? It's not what I heard him say. Amen. All things are made new. Now, when are you going to believe it? Come on, somebody. Praise God. Everybody say, all things are made new. Now, when are you going to believe it? If you have an excuse, it's not made new. If you have a reason to suffer and to struggle, it's not been made new. When it's been made new, there's no reason to struggle. There's nothing holding you back. You're richly blessed in all things, the Bible says. Look at this. He wishes above all things that you prosper and be in good health. That's my, that's my portion. Amen. Look at this, verse 14. And the word of Christ became flesh, human incarnate. And the tabernacle fixed his tents of flesh while alive among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty. Such glory as, only begotten, as the only begotten son receives from his father. Full of grace, favor, and loving kindness and truth. John testified about him and cried out. This was he of whom I said. He who comes after me has priority over me, for he has, for he was before me. He takes rank above me, for he existed before I did. He has advanced before me because he is my chief. Mm. Mm. Man, that's a man that understands submission authority. My God. <laughs> that guy understands rank. A lot of people don't understand that. Who defines your rank and where, who defines your rank? That's a good question. For out, of the, for out of his fullness, abundance we have all received, all had a share. And, and we were all supplied with one grace mm -mm -mm, after another. And spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even favor upon favor and gift Heaped up mm -mm, upon gift. 
Tell your neighbor, that sounds pretty good to me. All had shared and were all supplied with. This is, this is what you have. You have one grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even, and even favor upon favor. And gift heaped up. You know when you heap something up? Amen? Heap it up. Tell your neighbor, heap it up. And then add some gifts on top upon gift. Heap it up. And then some gifts on top. Amen? You were designed by God to prosper. Everywhere you're planted. You shall be like a tree. Planted by the river. Its leaf will never wither. And it will produce fruit only in good season. No. In every season. Gotcha. <laughs> Amen? Well, you know, I'm just going through a bad season. You know, bad seasons are not New Testament. Bad seasons were Old Testament. You have the victory in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm just going through a bad season. That doesn't exist in the Old Testament. Trials and tribulations come, but you're more than a conqueror. Amen? So that means... That means in the Old Testament, they had bad seasons. Listen, let me tell you. Can I tell you? He's about to tell you. Look at this. In the Old Testament, men had bad seasons. Then they had to cry out to God and wait for God to answer. Is that true? God now lives on the inside of you, and he's put his word on the inside of you. And he's waiting for you to speak for him to act. Do you understand the difference between that? I'm going to make it more clear by giving you some scripture. Signs and wonders follow the preaching of what? The Bible says signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word. The word was made flesh, dwelt among men. Amen. Amen. And the word now lives in you. Are you listening to me? So signs and wonders follow you because you begin to preach his word. Amen? Are you listening to me? That's why your, li your leaf, it was prophesying of what was to come. Your leaf would never wither. Amen? It doesn't, ma it doesn't mean you don't go through a test, but you conquer the test. Amen? If you conquer one test, it would be one thing. But if you conquer many tests, that means you're more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. So you are more than a conqueror. You don't just conquer. You don't just take. You take that, and I'll take this, and I'll take that. Amen. Thank you very much. And you better leave me alone because I'll take that too. At the end of the day, you have the victory. Every man and child and woman born of God, everybody say, has the victory. You have the victory. And you overcome the world. Because the overcomer now lives on the inside of you. Can I get an amen? That's a big difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament empowers the believer to be an overcomer in every situation. Because you have God living on the inside of you. The Old Testament, they had to wait for him to show up. Now when you show up, he shows up. Mm. Come on, somebody. You're not listening. That's why the Bible says that New Testament believers, not Old Testament, specifically New Testament believers are children of the light. So light destroys darkness. You can't be conquered by darkness if you're a child of the light. Can I get a big amen in this church? I said you can't be conquered by darkness if you're a child of the light. It cannot happen. It's actually physically impossible. Scientifically impossible. Well, I'm going through a test. Well, hurry up and go through it. Are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Let me ask you this. I'm going through a test. I'm going through a struggle. Let me ask you this. Do you have the victory? Well, oh, no, you don't. You start considering what your five senses see and you'll tell a different story. You got to begin to confess what he says about your situation. 
Come on, somebody. And your situation will come to nothing. Can I get a big amen in this church? This is good. I cannot be stopped. Neither can you. You are an unstoppable force. Because the head of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? That's to the new covenant believer. Are you listening to me? God is for you because sin has been eradicated. And there's nothing blocking you from God's grace. So you have access into the holy of holies. Oh, I'm just going through it. You, you got to stop it. Tell you never stop it. Well, I'm just going through a, a tough season, you know. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have access to the Holy of Holies? Won't you run in? <laughs> Amen. Let me ask you this. If you, go, if you go run into the Holy of Holies, are you going to have peace? Are you going to have joy? Are you going to have victory? Can the devil follow you in there? Then why don't you just go ahead and do that? The problem is this. The Bible says you have access. That means you have to access it. You have access to the Holy of Holies. Jesus lives inside of me. Come on, somebody. The Apostle Paul called it, Christ in me, the hope of glory. It is hope that we have access. But it's faith when you access it. Come on, somebody. Hey, come on, somebody. A lot of people live their Christianity on hope. Everything is hope. Oh, I hope he get healed. I hope God break me through. Oh, I hope the devil's defeated. Oh, I hope, my Lord, I hope, I hope, I hope. You don't, God's not giving you a great hope. He's giving you great faith. Amen? And everybody, everything in the word clearly states that everything that is outside of faith is what? Sin. You just got to get into faith. Faith is acting on that hope. Tell your neighbor, faith is acting on my hope. Hope draws you in. Hope makes you curious. Hope is the trailer to the movie. Man, I think I want to watch that movie. Amen? And the Lord will do that. You spend enough time with him, he'll give you a trailer of what your life looks like in him. Anybody get that? Anybody get one of those? The Bible says he'll show you things to come. To who? To the believer. Do I have any believers in this place? God will show you things to come. He's going to begin to show you who you are. Before it's, all said, before it's all said and done, you're going to start believing that you're a Holy Ghost Avenger. I'm just telling you right now. Just don't get puffed up in pride. You are a part of the team. We need the other ones too. You don't have all the abilities. <laughs> I don't care how powerful you are. <laughs> Everybody say, Jesus lives in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. It's time to walk in that hope, amen, by walking by faith, amen. Verse 16, for out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received. Everybody say all received. All had a share. And we were all supplied with, come on, one grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Even favor upon favor. Mm. Gift heaped up upon gift. Come on, give Jesus glory in this place. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved... It is the power of God. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has God, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God through, though for the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message we preach to save those who believe. 
You get so caught up in the things of the world, you're going to start thinking that the gospel is foolishness. You know, a lot of Christians walk around ashamed of their belief. Because there's, listen, if you are ashamed of your faith, it's because you're pumping so much of the world in you that now the world's beginning to influence you. And that's why you're ashamed of the gospel. That's why you're ashamed of, the, of Jesus in you. Because you are more grounded in this world than you are in that world. Amen? You need to be seated with Christ in heavenly places and begin to renew your mind. And that shame will start leaving you in the name of Jesus. For the Jews request a sign the Greeks after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Come on, somebody. Verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. To put the shame, the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put the shame, the things which are mighty. Amen? How can you bring down mighty things? Good question. See if anybody's got the answer. How can you bring down mighty things in the world? Let me ask you this. Are there mighty things in the world? How can you bring down mighty things? By being mightier. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Amen? In order for you to bring down mighty things, you have to be stronger than they are. And you are well able to take the land in Jesus' name. Well, what are you telling me, Pastor Alex? I'm telling you that God's going to make you mighty. Mightier than the things of this world. You know why? When you are... Able to take down mighty things, you have a thing called dominion. Can I get a big amen? And that is originally what God bestowed to Adam. And God has restored it through Jesus Christ. The Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Come on, somebody. To eradicate the mistakes the first Adam made. Can I get a big amen? To restore us back to our original nature, which is to have dominion. And to be fruitful, to take the land, and to subdue it, and to multiply it. Can I get an amen in this place? Are you listening to what I'm saying? How can you listen to these things and have a defeated mindset? The only way you can have a defeated mindset is if you're listening to the devil. He is the accuser. First thing he's going to do is accuse you of everything. Get you to feel guilty. Get you to feel ashamed. And in that place, he'll, he'll, he'll completely have his way with you. You've got to believe that you've been set free and delivered by the blood of Jesus. You've got to believe that you're a new creation. You are born again. Everybody say, I am born again. My past has been wiped clean completely. Separated as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered. Well, you can quote it all you want here, but a lot of you guys don't believe it. Why do you think I'm preaching about it? Because I want to hear it myself again? Amen. I'm, I'm going to provoke you today. You think I just brought up this message? Oh, you know what? My God, I'm going to talk about uh, being victorious today. My God. And uh, being born again. I'm not struggling with my identity in Christ. But many people in this place are. Well, Pastor Isaac, how do you know? Because I see it on your face. <laughs> Amen. Nervous laughter. Look at this. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. You are called to conquer and dominate mighty things in the world. If I were to ask you, what things in the world are mighty? What are we talking about? Think about it. If I was to talk to you, if I was to say, what are the mighty things in this world? What would your response be? You would say nations, kings, rulers, 
the people behind the scenes, the, back, the banking cartel of the world. You can call it the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. Hollywood. Hello? Social media. Are those not the mighty things of this world? You are called and anointed by God to take those things down. This is what I'm talking about. Now, just to show you in contrast where we are in 2023, so you don't get it twisted. If I were to ask you, in the church, what are the mighty things in the church? I would love to hear your response to that. Huh? I'm waiting. You can take out the things in the you can take out the things in the church, a modern day church with a super soaker. Right now. Because the church is not in her right place. What are the mighty things in the church? Man, we got, we got strong worship in our church. I'm telling you right now. We got strong worship, bro. I'm telling you right now. We put that fog machine on and we got the light show. I'll tell you right now. It's not what you do in the four walls of the church. It's what, you, it's what you do outside the four walls of the church. The, the four walls of the church is just a place for equipping so that hopefully you take that equipment and do something practical with it in society. We totally forgot about that. There's no practical nothing going on. Everybody's just hyper-spiritual. What's mighty in the church? Oh, man, we got big LED screens. My God. What? Seen that LED screen in that church? My God, that thing's worth probably $200,000. Wow. Mighty LED screens, mighty buildings, mighty 10-acre plot of land. Wow. Devil's not impressed. Amen? He's like, oh, yeah, that's a cute LED wall. You know, I, I built Dubai, just to, just to let you know. I mean, I don't want to rub, rub it in now, but we got Dubai. We got Fort Knox. You ever heard of Fort Knox? I got enough gold to build your church. Brick on brick. I could build a model of your church just with the goal that I have in Fort Knox. He's not impressed. Listen to, listen to me. Well, why is he winning? You know why the devil's winning? It's not because he has the victory. We have the victory. But unless you act on your faith, we're not going to take back what is rightfully ours. What if Caleb didn't tell the, the children, the Hebrew children, Israel? What if he didn't tell them we are well able to take the land? What if, they, what if the spies came back and they were discouraged and were like, my God, that's really mighty. Do right? <laughs> you see how mighty that is? You know, guys, I think you're right. We should go back. Let's go back. Let's go back in the camp and worship. Let's go back in the, in the camp and burn incense. Let's go back in the camp and burn a couple more offerings for the Lord. I'm not saying, look, there's a time and place for all that stuff. But there's a time and place where God tells you to take the land and you have to take the land. And if you don't take the land, the land is not taken. I mean, it's not rocket science. That's great. I love worship. I love teaching people. But I don't like, I get nervous. When people start just listening, 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 I don't see no fruit in their life. So then that's why in service I get a little hot and spicy and I jab at you. And I provoke you and I try to do whatever I can to take you out of the outer limits of your mind. You're either going to get offended or you're going to change. But I'm not going to keep a bunch of lukewarm people in my church. Are you listening to me? Well, Pastor Ross, why are you taking a jab at me? I'm taking a jab at you because I want you to change. I don't want you to get to the other side and suffer loss of all the things that God had for you, but you never, you never took them. Come on, somebody. We are well able to take the land. You got to wake up. The excuse is strange when you begin to believe that you are born again. You are a new creation, a new creature. Everybody say, I am a new creature. You ain't never seen anything like me. I've never seen anything like me. You're becoming acquainted with your supernatural nature. Can I get an amen? Yes. But 
But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are currently mighty. We're going to take them back. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some men and some people with backbone that want to march with me to take back. Amen? I'm not looking for some indifferent, fake, wishy-washy people. Amen? We're looking for an army. We need to mobilize ourselves like an army. We're not individual moral agents. Caleb rallied the troops and led them in the battle. It was David and his mighty men. But nowadays, all the mighty men, they're, they, they, too mighty in their own sight. Well, you know what, David? I know you're the king and all. God's given you the vision. But I'm pretty mighty. I mean, the Bible says so. And I just might be mightier than you. I'm going to take my horse and I'm just going to go be mighty by myself. I'm mighty. <laughs> we, got a lot of, we got a lot of champions out there. I call them champions. I know a champion when I see one. There's one thing the Lord's given me is a supernatural ability to recognize a champion. I'm just telling you right now. I'm like, man, that boy's a champion right there. I know a champion when I see one. Oh, you champion. Love you. I'm not changing. You know what? I'm going to take my horse and uh, pretty mighty. I don't know if you noticed. I'm just going to go be mighty by myself. All right. Isn't that what the devil did? There was a visionary in heaven. But he thought he was mightier, didn't he? That's a problem we have. I'm going to try to bring a solution. I'm going to try. I'm going to bring a solution to this problem. Because the solution is the word. It's proper doctrine. It's teaching people how to hold rank. Amen? That was like, you know, man, he woke up one day. He's like, have you guys seen this? Look how amazing I am. I mean, all these thousands of years, wasting my time not realizing how amazing I am. Unbelievable. Would you just look at me? Just look at it. Wow, just so amazing. Unfortunately, that's what happens to success. Success can do that, you know? Before you had the Louis Vuitton shoes, you didn't think you were too amazing. Now you got the Louis Vuittons. I'm like, oh, oh hold on a minute. Oh, oh, guys, hold on a minute. I think I, think I might just be a big deal. I got man servants. Hold on a minute. Guys, I think we can make a bum rush to the Godhead and take over this whole thing. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> That's the devil. You begin to act like the devil when you don't know how to hold rank. Amen? David and his mighty men. Mighty. But they're mighty because they're men under authority. Hey, what made them mighty? What makes you up mighty? What gives you authority? It's because you're under authority. Can I get an amen? Mm. Look at this. But God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. You know, it's funny, so many of you, verse 28, focus on that, on that storyline. That is your storyline, and it's been your storyline for so many years. Oh, I'm just a base thing. I'm a despised thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a despised thing. <laughs> Brother, did you not read the Bible? You're the one that's chosen. Wake up. You can't use that as the excuse. Well, 
You know, I'll tell you right now, if anybody's overlooked, it's going to be me. I'll tell you right now. If anybody's not going to get affirmation and a pat on the back, it's me. Ain't nobody care about me. Well, let verse 28 encourage you. You're the one that's chosen. Shut up. <laughs> Amen. The whole Bible is backwards to what we think. See, in, in, in our society, it's the good-looking, intelligent, whatever, tall, dark, and handsome, whatever you want to call it. It's a joke. Nevertheless, true. I digress. It's not about those things. You understand what I'm talking about? It's not about those things. It's about what God says. <laughs> you have got to start looking at yourself in the mirror and begin to like what you see because you are renewed. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There ain't never been anybody like you. We'll never be anybody like you. You know, you know, you know the way, the, a good way to think about it, and this might help some of you guys. How many guys, you know, you, you go to the ice cream store, ice cream shop, and you see all the different flavors of ice cream. And you got a favorite flavor, right? Some of you got more than one flavor that's your favorite. We can tell, and I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Got too many favorites. But most people have a favorite flavor, right? Hello? They're all unique, colorful, different, right? God's made many different flavors of men and women, many different varieties. But you know what's amazing about God? All of one, all of them are his favorites. Have you ever looked at yourself like that? You know, in Song of Solomon, it says, one look at you and you stole my heart. As soon as God made you, you stole his heart. He loves you like that. Loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son for you. You are worth Jesus to the Father. Jesus was willing to give up Jesus. God was willing to give up Jesus for you. Think about that. That's how special you are. Every single one of you in this place. You are more special than you could ever dream to God. I could never in a thousand sermons describe to you how special you are to him. Because you are more special than even his own begotten son. Because he was willing to lay him down for you. Think about that. That's how much he loves. Because you are his children. you got to understand that. you got to understand that. Jesus is the firstborn of many sons being brought to glory. That's who you are. This whole low self-esteem thing, that's the devil. You're listening to the devil. Listen, if you have low self-esteem in this place, you've just been listening to the devil too long. You need to start reading the Bible. You need to start listening to what he says about you. The problem is this. People have low self-esteem because they're trying to be accepted by the world. Who defines beauty in your eyes? Who defines what is good and evil in your eyes? Who, dis, who defines what is acceptable and not acceptable? Why do you think you're not acceptable? You've been listening to the, you've been listening to the devil too long, honey. Come on, somebody. Well, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, and I, I'm missing this and I'm missing that. Who told you that? You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? One look at you, and you stole his heart. You are the apple of his eye. You walk in the field, you see this bright red apple. Wow. It's the most beautiful one in the tree. That's who you are to him. You're the one that he chooses to go after. That's what it means to be the apple of somebody's eye. People don't know that. People quote it. Oh, the apple of his eye. Well, you know, I guess, you know, yeah, I, I'm, you know, God likes apples. You know, I think Adam ate an apple, you know. Uh, hold on. Well, I don't understand what the apple analogy is about. <laughs> it's a form of, it's a figure of speech. Being the apple of his eye 
means that you're out of the tree full of apples, you are the one apple that he desired. That's you. You're the one that he desires. Everybody say, I am the one that he desires. That is your identity in Christ. You mean me? I am? I don't know about you, but I know for a fact I am the one that he desires. You got to know it like that. How can it be for everybody? It is like that because he's God. You're not God. So I don't know about you guys, but I know for a fact I'm his favorite. He'll make you believe that because he actually believes that. That's the way he sees you. You're his favorite. Now think about all the bad things and all the stupid things that you think in your head about yourself when he's in heaven looking at you as the apple of his eye and you are his favorite. Everybody say, I'm the apple of his eye. eye. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring those, to bring to nothing the things which are. Now, if I were to ask you what things are in the world, there's a lot of things you can say. We call to bring him to nothing, amen, to commandeer, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But, what, but whatever former things I had that might have been gains to me, I have considered as one combined loss for Christ's sake. Are you willing to lay everything down, my friend? Lay down your guilt, your suffering, your pain, your condemnation. Amen? Are you ready to receive and take a hold of your redeemed life? And you need to stop reminding yourself of your past. Past has got nothing on you. Amen? You're not your past. Come on, somebody. That's another person. Well, you don't know what they did to me. The, the problem is this. Look, listen, and I know people have been hurt. And I'm not being insensitive by saying this. I'm trying to get you to, to think and believe what's actually happened here. Well, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know the things that were done to me. Listen, that happened to a person that was crucified with Christ. You are a new creation. That didn't happen to you. That happened to the old you, which is not crucified with Christ. Are you listening to me? You are redeemed. Everybody say, I am redeemed. Yes, furthermore, I can count everything as lost compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth, and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and becoming progressively, more deeply, and intimately acquainted with him, Mm. of perceiving and recognizing and understanding with him more fully and clearly. For his sake, I have lost everything. Everybody say, I have lost everything. And consider it all to be mere rubbish. Refuse drags in order that I may gain and win Christ, the anointed one. That's a decision every single believer has to do. You have to forsake everything of your past. You have to consider it lost. That you may gain Christ and what he has for you. Because of this, I have an overwhelming ability to believe in people. Amen? Because only heaven knows what kind of unrealized potential lives on the inside of you. There's actually no limit. I don't put any limits or caps on anybody. Amen? We're all becoming acquainted with this new creation that you are, including yourself. There's nothing holding you back. The only thing holding you back is excuses. That I may actually be found and know, known as in him, not having any self-achieved righteousness that can be called my own. Man, this is so good. Based on my own obedience to the law's demands. Ritualistic uprightness and supposed right standing with God thus acquired. By possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ the anointed one. The truly right standing with God which comes By God, by saving faith. Isn't that amazing? 
You could be accepted by him because of what Jesus did, not because of what you've done. I am saved because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. He purchased that for me. The Bible says you have been imputed righteousness. Can I get a big, a big amen in this church? For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. That I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it, which it exerts all over believers and that I may also, that I may so share with his sufferings as to, as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, into his death in hope. Look at that. That I may, that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection. Amen? And that power conquers all. Can I get a big amen? Yes, in this life you will suffer persecution. But just because you suffer persecution doesn't mean you don't overcome. You overcome and you win at the end of the day. Amen? You win the war. At the end of the day, you always win. The devil picked the wrong opponent with you. Can I get an amen? If you have Jesus living on the inside of you, he picked the wrong opponent. Tell him you got the wrong one. Hey, you know what I'm talking about? Some of you in the world, you got the wrong one, buddy. <laughs> Hold up a minute. This brother don't got the wrong one. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Some nonsense. Brother, I'll tell you right now. I was the king of nonsense. Amen. I'm glad I'm born again. Are you? You done got the wrong one. See, now that same fire, I have it for the devil. Amen. My fire hasn't changed. It's just been, it just flipped to my real enemy. Before, I used to think my brothers were my enemies. Amen. Now I know what my real enemy. Amen. And he done got the wrong one. I'm just telling you right now. Before, I used to look at my brothers with the crazy eyes. Now I'll get the devil the crazy eyes. You don't got the wrong one, bro. Amen? Hey. <laughs> you don't got the wrong one. Everybody go to Matthew 16. This is what it comes down to here. Come on, man. You got to believe it. Do, you, do I have any believers in the house? Come on. Are you going to continue to give yourself excuses? Or are you going to tell the devil, you got the wrong one, buddy? <laughs> you got the wrong one. I'm just telling you right now. You don't come up in here like that. Amen? That's how I, that's how I do it. My kids get sick or anything happens in my house. Hold on a minute, you don't got the wrong one. Hold on, I'm going to be right back. You know, before when I said I'll be right back, people would probably start running. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> now when I say I'll be right back, the devil's the one running. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'll be right back. Hold on a minute. I got something for you, buddy. Now I get the anointing oil. You know what I'm talking about? I got that anointing oil, amen? You don't got the wrong one, amen? Because I know the weapons of my warfare. And they are not carnal, amen? But they're strong. Come on, somebody. They are strong. And they're mighty. And pulling down strongholds. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness in this place? Hey! Come on. <laughs> you just got to start using them. You start using them and you're like, oh my... Look at that. Honey. The kid just got healed. Would you look at that? Wow. It's funny how it's funny with people like that. 
I was praying for somebody. I was praying for somebody. You know, their finger was like broken or something. And uh, it was all purple and it looked like somebody hit it with a hammer and it was like smushed up. It looked like a giant sausage, black and purple. And I just laid hands on them, prayed. You know, the problem is a lot of times people think you have to dramatize everything. You have to like, you know, speak in emergency tongues. And, but, you know, you know, and offer up a, a lamb and a bull and a ram before the Lord. And then pray with your salvation beads. <laughs> Drink water from the Jordan. <laughs> pray while holding on to that little part, that little snippet, that little piece of the old wooden cross that you got at TBN. <laughs> you feel that, honey? I think I feel some blisters in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> because a religion is hyper just, just everything's so just hyper crazy when you go and do something just simple just acting on the word people don't take it seriously a lot of times people, you know it's like so I laid hands on the, I just grabbed his hand and just very quick prayer Father in the name of Jesus I command this a finger to be healed and the, and the guy woke up the next day, the, the finger was completely healed. He was going to go to the hospital. I mean, completely healed. <laughs> deaf ears open. Amen. People deaf, they come to you. Hey, man, can I pray? And then I pray, and then they're like, you're done? I'm like, yeah. What do you want me to sacrifice a lamb? <laughs> That's prayer. Believers will lay hands on the sick. You know, the Bible says all you go, the only thing required for somebody to get healed is that you lay, hands on, you lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. That's it. There's really nothing else that needs to be done. Whoa. Isn't that a revelation? Isn't that amazing? It's amazing, right? Wow. You mean it's God's power, not mine? Yes. So it's actually very simple. Sometimes I come to the altar, I just lay hands on somebody very simply. And they're shocked at how simple it is. Like it really is simple when you believe. Amen? There is time where the anointing comes on you to pray the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But that's not, as, that's not you initiating it. Amen? That's the Holy Ghost. That's the unction. Like you start praying in the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden you get an unction. It's like you hit a vein. You know what I'm talking about? And you start praying effectively and fervently. Come on, somebody. You start standing in the gap, interceding for somebody. Amen. But that's all by the Holy Ghost. It's by the grace of God. Amen. It's not your physical effort that makes the prayer stronger. It's the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let me give you an example. People, you see people pray sometimes. And they're all like, God. But they're doing it. You know what I'm talking about? It's not a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The sad thing is they're actually doing it. Like if it was a manifestation of the Holy Ghost, I get it. The guy's, you know, acting like whatever, you know. He looks crazy because the Holy Ghost is on him. I get it. I've done that. But when you start acting crazy, that's a whole different thing now. Now you're, you know, you're the one acting crazy. Why? You think, you think you're going to make God move with all that? Well, let me try one knee. Pray on one. Okay, maybe two knees. It's not about physical effort. Get in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And if the Holy Ghost manifests itself in you in a certain way and there's an unction for you to do something, do that. Amen? But it's not about your physical exercise that somebody gets healed. It's not like you're trying to tune in to an old AM radio station. I almost got it. Oh, no, I went past it. What? The, 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 the. Got the antenna outside. 
Trying to get a hold of God. Some people pray like this. Trying to get a hold of God. Where is he? Oh, I'm going to find him right now. Tell you right now, I'm going to find him. We're going to get this miracle, honey. You just give me a minute here. I just got to get on that frequency. That's new age crap. Amen? That's not grace. Grace is just get in the Holy Ghost. Spend time with him. Love on him. Talk to him. Pray. And the Holy Ghost will begin to pray through you. Amen? The Holy Ghost will begin to instigate things in you. And do that. Amen? Not, not some, you know, and that's where people get weird and flaky. Because people start reproducing manifestations. Amen? Don't do that. Don't try to conjure up things. You get into Fruit Loop land like that. You just have to do what he tells you to do. Amen? Stop trying to put anything on. Amen? Look at this, verse 15. All right, let's go to verse 13. Matthew, and by the way, that was Matthew 16, 13. Look at this. I want you to get this. This is the difference between one believer and the next. When Jesus came into the region of Syria, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist. Some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And this is the key right here. Everybody say this is the key. Verse 15. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Amen. This is going to be the difference between your victory in any given area in your life. I'm going to say it again. This is going to be the difference between any given any area of your life, you walking in victory in that area. In the area of healing, who do you say he is? In the area of finances, who do you say he is? In the area of supernatural direction for your life, who do you say he is? Come on, somebody. Hello? A lot of people have a lot of things to say about Jesus, don't they? Jesus is the number one talked about person that ever walked on this planet. Is that true? I'm going to say it again. Jesus is to this day the number one talked about person on this planet. Bar none, Jesus, that is a fact. So would it be fair to say that a lot of men have a lot of things to say about Jesus? Yes. What do you say about him? That's very important. What do you have to say about him? Who is he to you? That's the important thing. It's not who Jesus is to me, it's who Jesus is to you. Because that's going to be your reality. But he said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered, yes. Said to him, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Jesus cannot be figured out. He's not a formula and he's not an equation. Amen. It happens in relationship with the Holy Ghost. He is revealed to you. And God wants to reveal to you who he is in your life. In every area of your life. You just have to be attentive to hear. You just have to show up. Tell your neighbor, show up. And he's going to show you that he's the healer. Show up and he's going to show you that he's the deliverer. Come on, somebody. Show up and he'll show you that he's more than enough. Not for your neighbor, but for you. For your neighbor too, but for you. He's more than enough. He's El Shaddai. Come on, somebody. He's the beginning and the end. Come on, somebody. He started a great work in you, he's going to finish it. If you allow him, if you get out of the way, if you crucify your flesh, come on, somebody. Pastor Eyes, why is God not having his way in my life? Because you're getting in the way. Get out the way. I choose to know nothing except Christ and him crucified. Start emptying yourself of everything and filling yourself with him. And all your problems will go away. Can I get a big amen in this church? Can I get a big amen? amen.
And also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ, because he had yet, yet not been revealed. Amen? Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. He took the keys, and he's given those keys to you. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. It's what you allow that will happen in your life. God is willing, and he's able. Amen? But now you have to allow him. You have to give him access. You have to say, God, I'm not withholding anything from you. Come do whatever it is that you want to do in my life. Come on, church. Look at this. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. We're going to 1, verse 6, actually. And you have to be reminded of this constantly. That's why it says in verse 6, to remind you. Everybody say remind you. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You have to remind yourself and stir yourself up with this fact. Amen? That God has not given you a spirit of fear. You are more than a conqueror. You have nothing to be afraid of. But what happens is this. People don't stir themselves up in this fact. People don't remind themselves of this fact. People don't realize that God has not given them a spirit of fear, and they don't realize that God has given them a spirit of power. Everybody say, I have a spirit of power. And that is to dominate, amen? And because people don't realize this, people experience verse 8. Verse 8 is where most Christians are. Look at this. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Man, that's a full one right there. Look at this. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. Many people are ashamed of the testimony of the Lord because they have a spirit of fear. Amen? Well, Pastor Isaac, I want to tell people about Jesus, but I just can't seem to do it. you got a spirit of fear. Check it out. According to Scripture... Verse 7 and 8 are linked. One follows the other. Isn't it amazing that everybody that's got fear or is, or is struggling with a spirit of fear always seem to be the people that are ashamed. They struggle with being ashamed. You're going to go talk to somebody about Jesus. You're going to go represent them. And you, uh, amen. You need to get the shame out. Amen. How do you do it? Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God. Well, how do you do it? Through the laying on of my hands. Amen. God does use people. Amen? Boldness is something that is imparted, and it's in Scripture. The mini- Laying on of hands is a ministry. Well, how does that ministry work? It works in the same way that every ministry in the Bible works, in the New, in the New Covenant. The fivefold ministry is there for the edification of the saints, for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. Amen? So you're struggling with fear, and that fear has to break. Amen? You go to the right church. Amen? You got five-fold ministers in there. They're going to lay hands on you. They're going to break that fear off of you. Amen? They're going to impart boldness into you. God uses people. Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen? Stir it up. We stir it up by the laying on of hands. 
So when we lay hands on people, we're not just doing it because of a religious routine. We're doing it because the Bible calls us to impart into people, amen, a gift. Come on, somebody. Is this good? Stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God, the, the Apostle Paul is speaking to his spiritual children, amen, specifically in that verse. Stirring them up to be bold. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Now check this out. Everybody go to the Amplified. It breaks it down in the, in the Greek. I love it. Because it's so descriptive. The Greek is so descriptive in this. The English, English does a very poor job of giving the full description. Look at this. Verse 7 in the Amplified. For God did not give us a spirit. Give us a spirit of timidity, cowardness, or fear. By modern day society, the first two define a humble person. Isn't that interesting? Anybody get what I'm saying? Most people think humble people are timid and coward. They're just like timid, you know, always humble. That man is actually pride in his own identity outside of Christ. If he knew his identity in Christ, amen, he wouldn't be timid. Come on, somebody. Timidity is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. God has not given you a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of a love and a sound and sound judgment and personal discipline, mm. abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Everybody go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to close out here real quick. As a matter of fact, let's go to Deuteronomy 8 because uh, let's do that. Now, I really feel that fear is going to break off of people today. And I believe that people are going to receive some boldness. Come on, are you hungry for some boldness today? I believe boldness is going to jump on some people. There are things that you have yet to do. And you have not been able to do them because you don't have boldness. And today we're going to get rid of the fear. Amen? Boldness in Scripture is synonymous with the word power. Come on, somebody. You got power. In the Greek is dunamis. You have dynamite power in the spirit. Amen. You're a Holy Ghost Rambo. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> dunamis. Tell them I got dunamis. I got dynamite power. Oh, don't feel sorry for me. You make a mistake. Oh, you don't know who I am. I'm Jason born in the Holy Ghost, my God. I'm just being humble right now. Be careful now. Hey, you know what I'm talking about. Don't ever make the mistake. Don't do it. What mistake? To mistake my humility for weakness. Come on, somebody. Don't ever do it. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, don't mistake now. My humility for weakness. Now I look all humble now. But don't do it. Don't you do it. Oh, don't do it. Oh, don't do it. You better not do it. Don't ever mistake my humility for weakness. My God. Come on, somebody. Do you have it in you? I don't know. Putting out some feelers. Amen. 
Come on, say it like you mean it. Don't you ever. Don't ever. Don't you ever, devil. Mistake my humility for weakness. I'm strong. I'm mighty. I'm powerful in the hand of God. Come on, somebody. Can I get a big amen in this church? Hey. I got dynamite power on the inside of me. The apostle Paul understood this. He said he enkindles me with superhuman energy. Come on, somebody. You got superhuman energy flowing on the inside of you. Hey, I got heaven on the inside of me. Excuse me now if I think I can conquer the world. Come on, somebody. You are more than a conqueror. You have victory over the world. I can have everything he says I can have. I can do everything he says I can do. Dynamite power. Deuteronomy 8. Every command which I commanded you today, you must obey, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply. Key word being observe. Amen? The Holy Ghost empowers you. Listen, and this is very simple. How are you going to walk in it? You have to observe. Well, how do you do that? Let me ask you this. Do you do that in your own strength? Do you observe God's commandments or do his will or his bidding or even read the Bible and understand it with your own ability, with your own intellect? How do you do it? By the spirit of grace. Remember, he gives you the power and the ability to do of his good pleasure. Amen? So that's the difference between us and them. It's the same promise. Same promise that he gave to them is the same promise he gives to us. It's the Abrahamic blessing. But you know what the difference is? We are empowered by God himself to live it out. Mm. Literally energizing us. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in who? Lives in who? In who? In who does it live in? Let me ask you this. Are you sure? The same spirit? Are you sure not a similar spirit? The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you? To quicken? To make alive? Your mortal body? Did I say mortal body? So does that mean you age like everybody else? No. Does that mean you get sick like everybody else? No. Does that mean you have superhuman energy in your body? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Hey. You understand what I'm talking about? Oh, Jesus, somebody's going to get into this place. I don't age like everybody else. I don't get sick like everybody else. I am enkindled with superhuman energy. My God, that's boldness. I don't talk like everybody else. I don't walk like everybody else. I don't even look like everybody else. Try to put limitations on me. I'm enkindled with superhuman energy by the Holy Ghost. My strength comes from the Lord on the inside of me. That's why I know great men of God in their 80s still preaching like they're 30 years old. How do they do it? They're enkindled with superhuman energy. They're just as sharp as they were when they were younger. If not sharper. Facts. Because they got a hold of this revelation. Somebody tell me, oh, my body's falling apart. Your body, not mine. Meet me at the basketball court, you'll find out. <laughs> Listen, many, many, many people have made the mistake of, of underestimating me on the basketball court. Don't be the next one. If you want to be the next one, I'll just catch another body. It's okay. I ain't got no problem doing that. It's facts. I would love to race my 18-year-old self. How is it possible? Because I just believe differently than you do. I hadn't played basketball for a year. I went to play the other day. I'm 40 years old. I was out hustling everybody on the court. I hadn't played for a year. I haven't played basketball for a year. I haven't done any physical exercise for a year. You might think it's stupid. 
Just because you don't know your promise. You haven't got a hold of this. I got strength that you don't know where it comes from. Come on, somebody. I just believe a little different. I don't know about you. And it just so happens to me that me and my wife age different than everybody else. I don't age like everybody else. Well, good for you, Pastor Oz. What about how about good for you? Why about you just start confessing? I'm just telling you the truth. Listen, you don't have to believe this. I'm going to believe it. I'll take it. So I'm on the table of what God's putting on the table. I'm like, tick, 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 tick. I got it all. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Take that too. You're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm 40 years old. Things should start falling apart. Then they will for you. It's okay. I'll take yours too. Thank you very much. In old age, amen, you'll be strong. If you believe it. I don't know. Might be talking to the wrong crowd. But I'm just telling you right now, you're going to see it in me. I'm not going to age like everybody else. I refuse to. So it just so happens that I don't. And you believe that you're falling apart. And it just so happens that you're falling apart. Hmm. Hmm. One plus one equals two. Okay. Come on, I'm instigating you to stop dealing with complacency and start becoming excellent. Because excellence lives on the inside of you. And his name is Jesus. And he wants to prosper you and be in good health. Do you receive it today? Man, I'm a, I'm a force spoon feed it to you if I got to today. I'm just telling you right now. Come here, open them cheeks. I'm just going to put it in. <laughs> spoon feed it. Amen? Look at this. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. So there are people that are, that are careful to observe, and there's people that are indifferent, careless. This is not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about those people that want to be careful to observe. Remembering that it's God that it's empowering you to do it. Your old sin nature has been crucified. Amen. You've been given a nature of righteousness in the spirit. So walk therefore in the spirit. Amen. Come on somebody. That you may live and multiply. How many guys want that? You can have that. Now if I told you that you may live and multiply, that means one thing. If God told you that you may live and multiply. Amen. Amen. He has, God has, a lot, has access to a lot of things. Amen? That you may live, multiply, go in, and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your forefathers. Whose forefathers are they talking about? That's a good question. Amen? Whose forefathers are they talking about in this passage? People think it's a trick question. They don't want to answer it. (laughs) It's not that difficult. Amen. (laughs) Listen. This promise was sworn to who? Your forefathers. (laughs) Whose forefathers? We are heirs according to the promise that God made to who? Abraham. Being the father of many nations. Our forefather. Come on, somebody. (laughs) That you may live. God wants you to live. He wants you to multiply. He wants you to go in, possess the land which God swore to your forefathers. They are your forefathers because you were engrafted into Abraham's ascendancy. Can I get a big amen? Can I get a big amen? You are anointed to go in and possess the land. I said you are anointed to go in and take back what the enemy took. My Lord. Well, you know, know, it's funny because I think part of the reason why people don't prosper is this. Well, you know, when's my family going to break through? 
When am I going to have my breakthrough? Listen carefully to what I'm saying. When is my family going to break through? When am I going to get my promotion? When am I going to break through? When is it going to be my turn? When are we going to break through? Everything is about you. Your vision of life is so minuscule to this little corner of reality that is called you. My friend, you've got to have a bigger picture. God's not calling you to conquer your little, your little corner of reality. He's taking you to possess some land. Can I get some amen? Come on, somebody. Possess it far beyond your little world. And it's funny because everybody that's like that gets nothing. Well, when am I going to break through? You're never going to break through because everything's about you. When am I going to have my turn? When is it going to be my turn? It's such a little, it's such a minuscule little vision. It's bigger than you. When you start going and possessing the land, guess what God's going to do with you? All the things that the world pursues, all the things that the world calls breakthrough, those will be your add-ons. So you got your eye fixed on the wrong thing. That's why you can't be blessed because you're so selfish. Everything's about you. The gospel is not about you only. It's about redeeming you so that everything that you have freely received, you're supposed to freely give. But you don't want to freely give anything. You just want to break through. So guess what? You don't break through. You know, when am I going to, when am I, when are we going to have our financial breakthrough? Well, how about, how, how about be an answer to somebody else's prayer and God will answer your prayers? How about he that refreshes others, he himself is refreshed. Man, it's interesting. I never refresh others, and I'm never refreshed. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm preaching good today. Come on, man. Well, when am I going to have my breakthrough? When are we going to break through? You know, my, man. You know what's funny? Me and my wife are never talking about our personal breakthrough. Ain't that something? I'm always thinking, you know what? How can we break them through? How can we help these people? Who can I disciple and help and mentor? Amen? Who can I go be a blessing in their life? And guess what happens to me? I never have to pray for anything. Everywhere, every city, every nation, every village that God took us around the world, we went to go be a blessing. So guess what? God provided for us in every good work, just like he said he would. He provided for us in every good work, richly. As soon as you start taking your eyes off of you and putting your eyes on your brother, God's going to break you through. A key to, to walking out scripture is the way Jesus summarized it all. And people miss it, and I've been talking about this for weeks now, and I'm bringing it all together. I'm bringing in all the other week's messages, and we're coming in for a landing. Amen? Amen. You know, I've been talking about offense, and I've been talking about your relationship and you, the way that you look at your brother has everything to do with your personal breakthrough. Because forgiveness is not, the gospel is not forgiveness to you only. It's forgiveness to you and your brother. So you have to believe both. If you only believe the gospel is forgiveness to you and you hold unforgiveness to, to your brother, that's not the gospel. Therefore, you are not forgiven. Because if you don't forgive your brother, God can't forgive you because the gospel is about forgiveness for you and your brother. But what happens is people live this personalized gospel where it's all about them. It's all about them. Forgiveness for me, grace for me, but for nobody else. That's not the gospel. That's another gospel. Just like the Apostle Paul rebuked the Galatians. They had made up another gospel. They were trying to say, well, listen, if you guys want to be born again, you have to be circumcised. And they started adding all these and changing it. And that's what people do. They believe in the Jesus that has grace for them, but not in the Jesus that has grace for the brother. That's not the Jesus we preach. Are you listening to me? So in order for you to receive grace for yourself, you have to receive it for your brother too. If you hold unforgiveness for your brother, you can't be forgiven. You see how it all comes down it's all the same. Because in the promise it says, live, multiply, go in, possess the land. Nobody cares about going in possessing anything. Everybody just wants what's theirs. You understand what? Like, oh, just me, my own little thing. No, no, God's got big things for you. It includes a lot of people. 
It includes a lot of grace and a lot of forgiveness. Can I get an amen? Look at this. And you shall remember the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with mammon, which you did not know. Nor did your forefathers know that he might know that man should not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The problem is this, when, when your sustenance becomes your idol, amen, God can't bless you with sustenance. You understand what I'm saying? Why would God increase you financially if finances are an idol in your life? So God has to allow, amen, your idol to take place in your life because you have free will. You've chosen to put mammon and possessions as an idol before God. So God's like, you know what? I respect your decision. And with that idol comes suffering and pain. Are you listening to me? And God watched you to test your heart. He gave you a little bit to see if you put your eyes and trust in it. And if you put your eyes and trust in it, then guess what? You're going around the mountain again. Then he gave you a little more and to see. And as soon as you can be given a little and you can thank God and do what he wants with it, then he says, I can give you a little more. Are you listening to me? Do you see the principle? Finances and blessing, material blessing, is a test from God to see if he can be trusted with more. Parable of the talents. Come on, guys. So next time you get a blessing, if the thing that you're thinking of, oh, I got this big blessing, I'm going to pay off my debt, I'm going to buy me a new car, I'm going to buy me a new flat skin TV, and everything's about you, that might be the last financial blessing that you get from God. And if you want to receive finances, you're going to have to go and hustle and get it yourself. You understand what I'm talking about? Because everything's about you. But now if you get increase, then now you start thinking, you know what, how can I be a blessing with this increase? Are you listening to me? Then you could be trusted with more. Can I get an amen? So he humbled you, allowed you to go through hunger and fed you with mammon. Why did he allow them to go through hunger? Why? Because they chose to make the wealth their idol. Fed you with manna, which you did not, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you, make known that man should not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know, you should know in your hearts that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord God chastens you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord God, look at this. Everybody say verse 7. This is what happens when you do verse 6. When you do verse 6, you get verse 7. For the Lord God is bringing you into a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains, springs that flowed out of the valley and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without what? Scarcity. In which you lack what? A land whose stones are iron. And, a, and out of those hills you can dig copper, a land with resources. Come on, mineral resources. Resources are, we're supposed to go out and commandeer these resources. Are you listening to me? Come on. When you have eaten and are full, then you, will, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Look at this. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgment, his statutes, which I command you this day. Lest when you have eaten, listen, listen, look at this. This is what God has promised you. Are you, are you getting it today? Do you see how much bigger it is? We as the body are supposed to be taking names out there. The mineral resources, the wealth of the wicked. Are you listening to me? Gold, copper, iron. Are you listening to me? Farming, land, everything. We are anointed to take it. We've got to prepare for this. We've got to plan for this. We've got to come together for this. Can I get a big amen? Listen, and, and, and this is what the Bible says. After you have taken these things.
Because they took them. It's time for our generation to do it. Amen? And that's what this church is all about. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses. It's funny how people love to persecute people for prosperity. Christians. When you have, when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply. And your silver and gold are what? Sounds like you're pretty rich. And all that you have is what? Hold on a minute. All that you have. Everybody say all that I have. When your heart is lifted up that you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the house of bondage. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions in a thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water out of the flint rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your forefathers did not know, that he might humble you and he might test you to do you good in the end. Mm. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might and my hand have gained me this wealth. That's the big temptation. That's the reason why most people can't be blessed. Because God will not allow any flesh to glory in his presence. Amen? If you can conquer the spirit of mammon, then God will entrust it to you. If it's not about you. Are you listening to me? You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he. Who? And who is this written to? The descendants of these people? They are our forefathers. Who is it written to? Everybody say me. You shall remember the Lord your God. Your God, for it is he who gives who? Are you sure? The power to get wealth. Let me ask you this. Some of you, it's talking to the descendants, and it's saying that these are our forefathers. Who are the descendants? Do I have any in this place? You have power from God to obtain wealth. If you do not put your faith and trust in deceitful riches. If you do, you'll get caught in a snare and it will take your soul. If you put your eyes on the kingdom and only the kingdom and put the kingdom first in all its righteousness, the things will be added onto you because you have power to get wealth. Can I get a big amen? But you got to be about a kingdom. you got to be a kingdom citizen. you got to be a kingdom man. Come on, somebody. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. That's the key. If we can get you to get rid of your covenant, your ideas, and you can get on his covenant, then God will bless you. Mightily, amen. He who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. My Lord. Do I need to say anything else? You know, so many people hustle for their breakthrough but you got to, I want everybody to write the word breakthrough down. Write it on your phone. Write it on a piece of paper. And what I want you to do if you're married, I want you to talk to your wife about what the definition of that word is in your family. If you're not married, then it's very easy. Talk for yourself. And ask yourself, what is this breakthrough? What is this breakthrough that everybody's trying to get? Everybody's trying to break through. There might be a reason why you're not getting it. It's because your breakthrough is all about you. And I'm just going to tell you right now, if your breakthrough is all about you and it's not about the kingdom, the breakthrough is never coming, honey. Because he's given you the power to create wealth, not to establish your own thing, honey. It's not to establish your own thing. It's not to do your own thing. It's to establish what? His kingdom. And as a result of you putting your focus on the kingdom, then everything that you will ever want God will supersede it. God will bless you more abundantly than anything you could ever dream or imagine. That's what it says. The things that God has prepared for them. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Amen. I could have never prayed for a wife like my wife. Didn't even know that. I didn't even know that a woman so amazing walked on this planet. I'm just telling you. Walking around in heaven. 
slipped and fell and came down to earth. And I found her. She was wandering around. She's like, I don't know, I'm lost. I'm like, no, you're found. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> you came to the right place. <laughs> I, mean, I could never have prayed for a wife like my wife. You know, sometimes people say, people tell signal, uh, single people, and tell them, write down what you want in your wife. Well, forget all that. Read in your mind. Get all the perversion out. Amen. Start realizing what the love of Jesus truly is. Get the liver from lust and pornography. And then begin to write down some things. You understand what I'm talking about? Because you got men writing down all this stuff that is all perversion. Get the liver first. As a matter of fact, stop asking God for a wife and seek first the kingdom. And that's going to be added on. When I was in Bible school, girls were throwing themselves at me. Bible school girls. I mean, Bible school girls. So I know how it is out there, guys. Listen. It's tough out there. I get it. But you have got to commit your way to the Lord and choose to ignore everything. And guess what I did? I just focused on what God wanted for me. And I got this blessing added on to me. Amen? You out there trying to get it, you're going to get the wrong one. You don't have to try to get nothing. Get him. Listen, get him and let him get the things that you want. Amen? When you get him, he's going to be like, we're going to go shopping. He's going to take you to the heavenly mall. You're going to walk with Jesus. He's going to be like, Jesus is going to have that? Like, no, shut up. I want, I want that. No, 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 that's not for you. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to shut up right now. All right, that's good. Shut up. I've <laughs> been waiting for you to shut up for a long time. Keep asking me some stupid things. I ain't never going to do that. Just humble yourself. Submit. Follow him. And then he's going to be like, look at this new place that you never even knew existed. Ooh, wow. Oh, my God. He's like, yeah, that's my blessing. You wanted that other thing. You still want that other thing? No, 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 I want that. Man, God's got things that he's created just for you. Amen. That includes your wife. It includes everything. I mean, my kids. It's like fabricated from God. Literally. To be just ridiculously amazing. I could never even begin to pray for children like that. How do you even do that? You understand what I'm talking about? Every good and perfect gift comes from where? The Father of lights. To whom there is no shadow of turning. How much he loves you. Amen? And the things that he has for you. I want everybody just to bow your heads in this place. God's got some good things for you. There's no shadow of turning. You know there are people that don't realize that the reason they are bitter is because they will not stop listening to the voices that the devil has programmed in their head. And my friend, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you don't choose to purge out those thoughts, those competing thoughts, and those lying voices, and replace them with the word, there's nobody on this planet that's going to be able to help you. You're going to struggle. And that's not what God has for you. You don't have to be bitter. You don't have to be full of shame. You don't have to be guilty. God's got something better. Loves you. It's for you. I don't know how God's going to do it for you. It's not about how. Stop focusing. You know, so, so many people focus on how more than focusing on him. I'm going to tell you something about that. 
That's a very powerful truth. People that focus on how God's going to do it more than God himself actually desire those things over God. Your hunger for God to bless you is stronger than your hunger for him. And it's time to let that go. Just, just want him. He's enough. Pursue him. Fall in love with him. And all these things, they're just add-ons. Stop making that the focus of your Christianity. Stop making all those things the be-all, end-all. Those things are not going to make you happy. It's Jesus. And the Bible clearly says 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross, Jesus came and he paid the price and he loves you unconditionally. Loves you. You shut down that music. Just turn it off. Loves you. And the devil would try to lie to you and tell you that God doesn't love you. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He died for you. He is intimately desiring to want to see you blessed and fulfilled in your life. And if there's anybody in the sound of my voice, if the devil's always lying to you, the day is the day of salvation. If he's always lying to you, if he's telling you that you're not going to heaven, that heaven is not your place, listen, the devil is a liar. Jesus loves you. And he's for you. 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross, Jesus came and he paid the price. Died on the cross for you. Jesus did not, God did not just say that he loved you. He sent his only begotten son to prove to you that he loves you. He loves you unconditionally. And he demonstrated his love for you by dying on the cross for you. And the Bible says that if you receive him as your Lord and Savior, that you will be born again. You will be made a new creation in Christ Jesus. And there's people in this place, you're not 100% sure if you were to die today, if heaven is your home. And you want to be 100% sure. If you want to be 100% sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that heaven is your home, I want you to raise your hand in this place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, just raise your hand in Jesus' name. I want to be 100% sure beyond a shadow of a doubt. Heaven is my home. This second altar call is for anybody in this place. If you were to say, Pastor Alex, I'm not 100% sure that I'm in God's will. I've been walking around the mountain for a long time. And today I don't want to leave this place without knowing that I've made it right with the Lord. I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. And I want to make it right today so that I can live out this year of promise in Jesus' name. If that's you today, I want you to come to the altar. I'm going to pray with you and for you in Jesus' name. Come on, church. I want you to pray right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, no more years of disappointment in the name of Jesus. So, Disappointment, I command you to go. Discouragement, I command you to go. Depression, I command you to go. Bitterness, I command you to go. Unforgiveness, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. You will live the promise of the Lord. You will live in the goodness of God in the land of the living in Jesus' name. I break that generational curse off of your life in Jesus' name. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I bind the devil. Loose him now in Jesus' name. Sangro be delivered today, daughter, in Jesus' name. Loose her now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. People think I need altar call music. I don't need no altar call music when you got the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost is what you need. What if you go someplace, there's no altar call music? What are you going to do then? You need the power of the Holy Ghost. People are struggling, and they need to be delivered from demons in Jesus' name. If there's anybody in this place with every eye closed, if you're struggling with sin, I want you to come to the front right now. It's going to break off of your life in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, say, brosande la catarara. If the devil's always lying to you and you have racing thoughts, I want you to come to the front right now in Jesus' name. If you have racing thoughts, come now in Jesus' name. 
Loose them in Jesus' name. I loose them in Jesus' name. I loose them in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. you in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be who God's called you to be in Jesus name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command every vain imagination Hey, to come to the obedience of Christ. I command peace in your mind in Jesus' name. Hey, brakatarada. There it is. Peace. Receive it now in your mind. Command racing thoughts to go. There it is, everybody. Receive. Joy for the journey. Come on, church, pray. Pray. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, just lift your hands up in this place. I feel the spirit of boldness coming on people. Just like you're seeing people get delivered in this place. In your workplace. Everywhere you go, you're going to see people get delivered from from devils in Jesus' name. Things that are plaguing them. You're going to say, devil, take your hands off of him. Jesus' name. I deliver you now by the head of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Freely you have received. Freely give. Hey, you are his hands. You are his feet. You are his lightning. You are his thunder. You are his mighty rushing river. Come on, somebody. You are his hands. You're his feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, God's going to give you boldness to plow through anything. Awkwardness, you plow through it. You're not intimidated. Listen, if you're called to preach the gospel of the kingdom, and you rely on everything that is a crutch, you rely on a microphone, you rely on a backtrack, you rely on this, and you you deal with being intimidated and being awkward. Listen, God's going to give you boldness to plow through anything and minister anywhere God takes you. Because it's not about church ambience. It's about the power of God and you have to carry it in Jesus' name. Everybody wants an ambience. I don't need an ambience when you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Be his light. Be his feet. Be his hands. Be his instrument. Speak when he speaks. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Boldness. Come on, Elvis. Come on. Right here, in Jesus' name. Listen, boldness. You're going to get some boldness today. I'm telling you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to get some boldness. Lay hands on them. Cast out devils. Boldness in Jesus' name. Hey, 
Hey. You're going to be like, hey, brother, God just showed me this. I want to pray for you right now. You're going to see miracles. It's time to start seeing miracles. Get activated. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Preach deliverance of the lost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm a Pentecostal. In Jesus' name. I'm filled with fire from heaven. The devil has believed my feet. You got to recognize your authority. I remember I went to this place out in the wilderness. We drove for hours in the jungle. We get to this little clay hut. It's like the floor was clay and it had cinder walls but no roof. And it was full of people. And it was a church. And the microphone was horrible. And literally, the sound system actually did the opposite. It made what I was saying in unintelligible. What are you going to do then? Are you going to come with a story? Or are you going to bring Jesus? You got to carry the power. Come on, somebody. And you have that dynamite power living on the inside of you. I did an altar call and I said, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. And you start seeing people get delivered right there in the, in the woods, in the, in the middle of nowhere. People get delivered, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. God wants to use you. He wants to use your hands. He wants to use your feet. But you got to start stepping out. Amen. And only boldness will allow you to plow through. All these American preachers, everybody needs an ambience. Oh, we need an ambience. Well, play the guitar, brother. What happens if the guy playing the guitar is in adultery? Many times I find that to be the case. The worship team is all backslidden. Amen? Come on, you just got to carry something real. In Jesus' name. I want everybody just to raise your hands in this place. Receive boldness from heaven. Ha, bro, ke. I'm talking about boldness that cuts through everything. That, my God, we're going to leap over that wall. I'm going to come through it. Devil. Come here, Adam. God's going to give you that boldness. You know what I see by the Holy Ghost? I see you doing concerts. And the people that you're doing the concert with, as you want to transition into ministry time, they start getting all awkward and weird on you. And you just plow right through it. My God, I see you plowing right through it. I see you flipping concerts into full revival meetings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Religious people will think it's weird, but the world won't. The world will just receive many baptisms, deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are like, I thought you were a hip-hop artist. Like, no, I'm a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold my mic. <laughs> I'm going to work. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Boldness in your industry to be a light. Boldness in your neighborhood block. Come on, somebody. Boldness in your workplace. Come here, buddy. I got a, I got a word for you. I got a word for you. The Lord told me, is that true? Yes, it is. My Lord. Yes, it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's how God wants to use you. No more crutches. All you need is the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, heaven is raining in this place. Mm, I hear the sound of many waters. <laughs> Everything that you have been delivered from, you can minister. Some of you have been delivered from suicide. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to come across people that are struggling with suicide. And as that spirit becomes near you, you will sniff it out by the Holy Ghost. You've been delivered from suicide. God will give you discernment specifically in that spirit of suicide. And people will get around you. They'll start feeling all awkward and weird. And you say, honey, I'm going to deal with that spirit of suicide that's been plaguing you. I adjure you now as the head of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
come out of her. And you're going to start people, you're going to start to see people get delivered in your house, at the coffee shop, everywhere you go. People struggling everywhere. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you right now. Just receive that boldness. Supernatural. Supernatural. Yes, it's supernatural. It's supernatural. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Supernatural. Supernatural. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God's going to give you a boldness for deliverance in Jesus' name. You're going to be aggressive about it. You're going to see people get free in Jesus' name. People struggling everywhere. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everything that God's put on you, you're going to be able to give it to others in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. So The fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Daughter, you will never be the same again from today forward. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, God's going to give you some joy for your journey. <laughs> the devil's a liar. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. <laughs> The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Never going to be the same again, honey. Never going to be the same again. Listen, God has a man of God for you, so you need to choose carefully. Be very careful. Be very careful. God's going to use you in the ministry. So be very careful. Be very careful. God's got purpose, special purpose in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dynamite. Dynamite power. You know, God's going to use you in the gifts very mightily. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because if it was up to other people, you wouldn't have those gifts. <laughs> but it's not about what other people think. Isn't that amazing how that works? <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? It's not about what people think. People get caught up in people's personalities. I don't see personalities. I see what God wants to do. God's going to use you in signs, wonders, and miracles. People are going to be so jealous. They're going to foam at the mouth. I'm telling you right now. I'm speaking by the Holy Ghost. You'll see creative miracles. Creative miracles. Signs, wonders. It's actually very gifted in that area. And it's the Lord. It's the hand of God on your life. In Jesus' name. It's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. See, God's got something for everybody. And it's got nothing to do with what people think about you. You see, if, you don't have a, if you're not a hater, you, you don't have any problems. But if you're a hater, you're going to have problems. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every person that came up. Those of you that came up to rededicate your lives or to receive Jesus for the first time, I want you to repeat this prayer with all of your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sin, Lord. Wash me. Cleanse me, Jesus. Thank you that today 
I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You will not know a day of defeat the rest of your life. Come on, somebody give a shout in this place. Hey! Never the same. Never the same. Well, today is our seven-year anniversary, and I did get carried away, as I do, <laughs> as is our custom, my God. Amen. So we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed. How many of you guys believe in this ministry, what God's doing in this house? Listen, we're getting ready to, literally, I'm meeting with uh, Charlie on Tuesday because we're pulling out all the blueprints to blow this place up. Amen. Not literally, but figuratively. Amen. So we're literally going to build out this whole side. My God, did somebody hold on to her? My God. Just a new wine of the Holy Ghost. My God. <laughs> These are not drunk as you suppose, okay? Amen. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build this whole thing out. Um, it's going to be about between five and 700 seat auditorium. Come on, somebody say hallelujah, Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Amen. We're going to build it completely debt free. Come on, somebody. Amen. As we have done everything completely debt free. If you would like to sow into the building fund, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. Today's a good day to do that. Amen. Seven year anniversary. Come on, somebody. How many of you guys have been blessed by this ministry? Sow into it. If you believe in what God's doing, come on, sow into it. How many of you guys have been blessed? Amen. So we're, we're going to be expanding this year. This year, a lot of things are going to be happening. We are um, next week, we're going to start working on building out our studio for broadcasting. Amen. Come on, somebody, give, give Jesus glory. Amen. We are going to do the second phase of the build out. The bathrooms are almost done. The piping is basically done. We just need to put in the toilets and all that. So let me say hallelujah about that. Amen. We're going to be on the property. We're actually going to have food trucks. We're going to have three food trucks on the property. Amen. Come on, somebody. We're working on that right now. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. So imagine you come into this property. You got a fancy coffee shop. Like I'm talking fancy. Amen. Somebody say fancy. Fancy coffee shop. We're going to have uh, food trucks, food, dessert, whatever. And you get to hang out in this beautiful property with the most nice cup of coffee you've ever had. And amazing food. Amen. Because we have standards up in this place. Amen. So you get to just come hang out. This place is going to be awesome. I mean, that's a multi-million dollar business. Amen. Come on, somebody give God the glory. Amen. <laughs> We're going to do that. We're going to start building the basketball courts. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to have two full, full court basketball courts. We're going to have uh, volleyball, soccer, all kinds of stuff, football, all kinds of stuff. We're looking to make this like a sports complex in a way. Amen. And a lot of us are going to, a lot of you guys are going to be working. Amen. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to be discipling kids. We're going to be reaching the schools this year. This year is takeoff. Amen? Come on. Can I get an amen? Amen? All right, um, sound guy, if we can put some background music as, they, uh, <laughs> as we hand out the envelopes and people give. Amen? Come on. So give as it is purpose in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Amen? For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Oh, wow. Look at that. Do you feel the ambience now? Yes. Yeah, come on. Um, you know, I was just thinking about this. I'll just throw this in here. You know, just looking around at all the families here and what God has done, and it's like we could go around the room. We could be here all day just sharing what the Lord has done in your lives in the past few years as you've connected and you've planted yourself in his house, you know. It's not about us or about this ministry. It's about being where God has called you to be. And when you connect with that and you plant yourself where God has called you to be, you will prosper. When you plug into the body of Christ, you will prosper. And it's like I can go around this room and see so many of you who've started businesses. Like God's give you, given you businesses, you know, that you didn't have that a few years ago. And God's given you businesses. Or he's, he's accelerated your business like crazy, you know. And it's been so awesome to see that, you know, and, and see you guys step into that. So many of you, um, you know, Adam and Allison starting with their music. Um, you know, Pastor Josh and Irma starting with real estate. You know, obviously the solar company has taken off to new heights. The roofing company has gone to the next level. Um, so many of you, God's given you business, and he's given that to you. You know, even with Pastor Stephanie and her earrings, um, you know, different different people, God's graced you in different ways. But it's, I, you know, I was just reflecting on that today and just thinking, wow, like, look at the people that, that have truly come. And many come. people have gotten promotions to yes. their jobs. Right, and the people Amazing. that have come and, like, plugged in. 
the prosperity is just, it's, it's there, it's happening, you know? So we just acknowledge the Lord and his goodness and all of that. And then um, Kyler with his project. Yeah. God's like it's just them. ridiculous. It's so cool. So it's just amazing. The word works and we know that, but sometimes you need to stop and acknowledge that in your own life, you know, and look what happens when you, you, you work the word and you plug into the house that God's called you to. And many people being inspired just to step out of the boat and yeah. do different things, things that God's put in your heart for years and you're finally executing and getting those things done like i know rosalie just launched her book yes where's rosalie at? She she's here? out there setting she's up. out here yes amen and it's amazing i mean the, her book is selling and it's amazing to and see for those of you who don't and know, it was and it was done with excellence yes like it's amazing the it's book, book is actually for amazing. postpartum moms teaching them how to walk that out with the holy ghost and fire and faith and not with depression and the world's narrative Come amen on. there's so, gifts amen in yeah. the house jeff with his uh his media company. Yeah, Jeff is starting his uh, media you know, company. You know, so so many things happening, just popping like popcorn, and it's just awesome to see you guys multiplying and you guys taking dominion in your in your area of influence. Amen. And many of you, I see yourselves positioning yourselves for increase. Yeah. Amen. Believing for bigger things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stepping out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Juan and Angela, it's amazing. Uh, give a clap to this couple. Yeah. Raised up, on the road, preaching the gospel. You know, and Juan comes out of the streets of Chicago. And, you know, he, you know, I think uh, the, they were trying to kill him over there in Chicago. He moved down to Florida. <laughs> he was running. And I just knocked on his door one day. He's like, who are you? I'm they thought we were Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm not. He's like, no, we were talking to his wife. He's like, no, no, we're not trying to hear all that. I'm like, no, it's not all that. It's, I'm, I'm telling you, God loves you. Amen. <laughs> he thought we were Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, it's amazing to see what God's done in your life. Amen. So awesome. Comes out of the streets of Chicago. His whole family is just like the Mexican mafia up there. <laughs> but you don't have to be, amen, who your family was. The generational curse is broken. He's a preacher now. Just, Finished just amazing. Finished two years of Bible school. Yeah, just amazing to see them. And so those of you still want to They're actually coming back doors. to plug in with us. Hey. It's awesome. Come on. It's awesome. <laughs> so... So you don't know who you're going to find knocking on these doors, soul in. Amen. Amen. You, you might find know. you another Juan and Angie out there. That's right. Come That's on. right. So you got to just tell somebody about Jesus. You don't know yeah. who you're talking to. Yeah. Amen. So it's just awesome to see a lot of you guys with your gifts and your talents starting to be developed. You're starting to get a track. And that's what I, we as pastors want for everybody in this place. We want you to, we, I want to see you get on your track yeah. and begin your race. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's Start the greatest fulfillment. Your eternal reward. That we, that we take. You know, that, that we partake in is you just we want to get you on God's track for your life. Amen. So you can prosper, be in good health, have a healthy marriage, awesome kids. Come Prepare on, you for eternity and help you have heaven on earth. Amen. That's what we want. Amen. That's our job so we love you guys. Sure. Thank you for standing with us, the whole leadership yes. team, everybody that serves. Amen. We love you guys so much. You guys have stood with us. And you're what makes the difference. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everybody coming together in one vision. Yeah. Amen. And so, like you he guys. said, we feel like we're just start. We're just about to start right now. Amen. And it's been you guys coming together, building this team. So, you know, like he said, thank you for standing with us, and that's what we celebrate today. You know, is that like it feels like Noah with the ark in a sense. Like we got the ark is ready, guys. Amen. <laughs> now it's uh, it's it's the flood's gonna come in, and the flood is gonna be the souls and the resources to win the world. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. I want everybody just to stand up as you give. Just lift your hands. I'm just so thankful. Father, we thank you, Lord. Come on, just thank him. Father, we thank you for your goodness. You're so awesome. Thank you for every miracle, every life saved, delivered, set free. We give you all the glory. We could do nothing without you. We are nothing without you, God. So we acknowledge you today. Everybody say, we acknowledge you today. Father, to you be all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, we love you, Jesus. You're awesome. We love you. And I want to tell you, church, we love you. And we're so happy that you guys are standing with us. Amen. So today we're just going to take a little, we're going to do a little potluck. I think they, did they prepare something here or? So just a little slideshow. Okay. Footage from the years. Amen. And um, just thank you guys. Amen. So we're going to have some food today. Are you guys ready to eat? Yes. 
Come on, now, somebody. You guys ready for something? Give us a couple something? minutes to set everything out. Okay? Yeah, so we're going to mingle and just chat for a little bit, and then we're going to have a good time. Amen. Love you guys. Love you. We'll see you on Wednesday. We'll see you next week, and we'll see you out there.